In the 21st century, we are facing the stage of development when social networks have become powerful tools for broadcasting one's opinion. Any opinion. Previously, it was just a gallery of personal life. Now, it's a diary of his own thoughts. This is a canvas of reaction to events that occur around people. Almost everyone can share a record that political activists were detained at a rally, can express their opinion about what is happening in Ukraine, talk about what they voted for, and express their political position. But today we will consider the case when the Internet could be an instrument for the whole country's image. Let us consider an example of Qatar. Qatar is the smallest country to host the World Cup. Its population is less than 3 million people, excluding expats and foreign workers. The territory is 11,600 square meters. Recently, the Internet went ablaze over the poster that went viral for asking visitors of World Cup to refrain from drinking alcohol and homosexuality. The situation got so serious, Qatar's emir had to respond to them saying that all fans will be welcome to this year's World Cup without discrimination. The Internet did what it does best and started spreading the information all over the globe in order to make Qatar accountable. And in the midst of all of this, the articles about migrant workers protesting in Qatar became buried in a line of low-level articles meant to grab one's attention. But why were people protesting and what it has to do with the World Cup? The answer is simple. Ever since it was announced that Qatar will be one of the next recipients for the worldwide football contest, the country became a hot spot for migrant workers. With a good economy and overall great image of the country, people from mainly India and Pakistan came flooding there with the hopes to make money on construction sites for the new FIFA 2022. Yet their dreams were soon to break. As soon as the construction started, the protests became common occurrence. The reason was obvious. People went on the streets in order to make the government notice them and start getting paid. Companies exploited these migrant workers and their feeble status in the country, leaving them with no pay for months and shared that the working conditions were almost inhumanly. According to the article from Business Human Rights, in 2019 migrant workers already went on strikes once. The issue was the same, yet they failed to see any results, however, the scale of the strikes and protests as a result was way bigger than the ones that happened in 2019, since this time even the government was involved. The simplest solution they could come up with was to deport all the foreign workforces, according to Doha News. Nevertheless, the numbers say that for themselves, according to The Guardian, over the years since FIFA has been awarded, over 6,500 migrant workers have died in Qatar. But how did the government respond? Did they mercy anything this time around too? No. The Qatari government solved the problem in the worst way possible. It promised people to repay what they owe and then deported them. Left with no money and no health due to the conditions of the previous workplace, people were left in depths as soon as they came back home, reports The Guardian. These numbers get even worse when viewed in the context of how much Qatar planned to make at the World Cup. Qatar plans to earn about $9 billion, said the director of the organization committee of the World Cup, Nasser al khater FIFA allocated $1.7 billion to Qatar for prize money and other expenses. The federation itself will earn $7.5 billion over the entire four-year cycle of the championship, mainly from the sale of television rights and sponsorship deals, said FIFA president Gianni Infatino. This is 1.1 billion more than at the 2018 World Cup in Russia. But the most important question, is anyone doing anything? No, unfortunately the worldwide media are not very interested in highlighting this topic and the little amount of works that have been found are all done by the scientists who were writing on this topic for what it seems like forever and highlight mainly the positive changes done by the government. All of this pushes us to believe that maybe addressing of the LGBTQ plus related scandal by Emir was a move towards concealing the scandal with migrant workers rather than the one to prevent people from by cutting the FIFA in Qatar, but we will never know.
Indeed, we could learn some lessons as the journalists and as the readers too. We have the right to receive truthful information, and according to the mass media, we really receive it, but we must not forget that not everything lies on the surface. We must always ask ourselves, why are we given this information? Is there something underneath it? Is it really that simple? And look for the answers to these questions by ourselves.